Hey everybody, thanks for joining me again on uh, Blazing Trails blog videos. Uh, I want to take a couple of minutes here and uh, talk to you about game cameras because I'm, um, you know, you guys are subscribed to my channel because of the wildlife videos that I have previously posted there. So let's get some game cameras set out here out in uh, beautiful eastern British Columbia and uh, see if we can get pictures of uh, actual bears instead of just their bear scat, right? Uh, so as you can see there's seven, I have seven game cameras uh, on the table here. Really only five of them are fully operational. All game cameras break down after a time because uh, they're electronic devices and they live outside. Strapped to trees in all kinds of weather and uh, eventually they break down. Even the best ones I think break down. Um, this one for example, we're not even going to use it, uh, not right away anyway, because it only takes daytime video now, the, the nighttime uh, infrared capability that no longer works on this camera. This camera I'll probably put out but I've got no control over settings at all anymore. It's really just turn it on and <laughs> hopefully you get something. But these five here all work fine. Okay this is my best camera here, my favorite camera made by Browning Corporation. It's called a Spec Ops. It takes two, uh, it takes true 1080p high def video just like a Blu-ray. It's fantastic. It's really the only game camera that I've bought that that lives up to the fact that, that it's advertised as 1080p high def video. This camera does that. Uh, other cameras advertise 1080p, but when you the ones I've had that there's one of them on this table here, uh, that but it doesn't compare to this camera. Uh, this is a Browning Strike Force. Uh, this a camera I actually got for free from Browning Corporation. Uh, because after I set up my cameras on that Cougar, uh, Cougar kill there back in 2019, uh, uh, the videos are on my channel, uh, Cougars on a Kill. Um, uh, I got such great videos, I contacted Browning Corporation and said, you got to see what your, what, your, uh, what your Browning camera caught. I had two cameras set on that, on that kill, this brought my, my favorite Browning Spec Ops, as well as this Bushnell, one of these Bushnell cameras here that are good at nighttime videos. I had one of those set up too. Anyway, when I sent those clips into Browning, they got back to me and said, hey, those are awesome. We want to use them in advertising and stuff. Pick out a, uh, pick out a free camera. So I picked out this Strike Force. Cool thing about the Browning Strike Force is uh, this one uh, has, uh, it has two separate lenses, one for daytime video taking and one for nighttime video taking, which allows Browning to dial in the, the, the best attributes for each lens for, for that application, day or night. This is a Stealth Cam a G45 NG model I got four or five years ago. Um, uh, it's hard to talk about this camera. It's been sort of like been hiding in the corny, in the corner. I only used it ever in, on one tree. I never moved it after I bought it. And uh, I, it, it's got fantastic battery life. The best battery life of any camera I've ever had. Generally, game cameras, you're going to replace batteries depending on the quality of battery you put in them. Um, you're going to replace batteries every year, year and a half. I use the Everardi Energizer Lithium Ultimate batteries, which are really expensive, I know. But they last the longest, they, they work hard, they do the best, the best job. This camera's only on its second set of batteries in like four years, and the, the second set of batteries only got installed about a year ago. When I flipped this camera on today, it was still showing 100% on battery. Uh, these are both Bushnell cameras, they're twins. Uh, I forget the original model name of this camera, model number for those interested, 119836. I've been quite, I bought one of these because of its, uh, uh, it uses a different way to, to film at night, I forget. It's got a, it's a full glow camera, which we'll talk about in a second, which is part of it. But it takes, uh, its specialty is nighttime video, and uh, that's why I bought one. And I thought, wow, this is a great camera, I bought another one. Um, this is a Bushnell Trophy Cam, a Trophy Cam Aggressor model, which is one of their top line cameras when I bought it. It's a no glow camera, uh, and it takes a uh, pretty good video, but not as good as this. Nothing beats this thing that I've seen. But it's now failed where it only I can only just turn it off or on. And that's it. Anyway, uh, e all all uh, game cameras take uh, use SD cards for their memory storage and uh, I have uh, I have two SD cards for each camera and I and I, I label the 
the SD card uh, specifically for each camera because the, the SD cards are formatted to match each camera. So I, I treat the, the, these game cameras when they're all set out like a trap line. I go out on my quad to each camera and I've got SD cards in my pocket and I just swap out the SD cards, go back to my coach and uh, use a SD card reader. You got to have one of those. Plugs into your computer. This one takes different sizes of SD cards and uh, you can uh, see what uh, camera got. It's like uh, panning for gold. You might see like you can only invariably you got a whole bunch of deer shots you know you have to go through and branches waving in front of the camera and stuff and uh, 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 but there'll be that little gold nugget in there the a grizzly bear or a cougar that makes it all worthwhile. I really enjoy enjoy this hobby. Uh, anyway that's a, a when you set up one of these game cameras, they all give you the option of whether you want still pictures or video clips. I originally started with trying to take them, use them with still pictures, but I was never happy with how a game camera takes still pictures. And it could have been my, my lack of camera ability. I'm not going to blame it on the camera, but I was generally not happy with what I was getting on stills. And you can set them for a single picture, a burst of three or a burst of five, and how many seconds to wait before it takes another if the animal are, is still moving in front of the camera, how many seconds before it takes another burst of pictures. But in the end, I switched to video clips, and I've always been happy with video clips. And if and I, and I got to mention, if you're using a, if you get a camera that can take really good quality, top line, high def, Blu-ray quality video, well, guess what? If you get good video clips, like I was getting on that Cougar Kill with this with this high def 1080p spec ops camera well then you can play it back on a photo photo uh, photoshop software and freeze frame it and then take a still shot off your video right you can do that with high quality video uh, clips from from game cameras and i've got awesome still shots i can go frame by frame and pick out exactly what still shot i it looks the best it works great so you can kind of have the best of both worlds um so there's that setup part of it. Uh, that's basically the same on every camera. Camera, you know, if it takes a video, do you want a 10-second video, a 15-second video, a 20-second video? You might say, oh, I always want a longer video. If there's, you know, I want to, if there's a grizzly bear there, I want to watch 20 seconds of it. I don't want to only watch 10 seconds. It's not that simple. You, you got to remember you, that camera's out on, hanging on a tree, and maybe it's windy that day, and it's blowing a branch, and you don't want 500. 20 second videos of a branch blowing in front of your camera. But that brings up the topic of proper setup where you place the camera. Generally, uh, always try to face the camera north or northeast. Why? Because you don't want it facing into the sun. Okay? Took me a little while to learn that one. Um, so if you can, you can't always, but if you can, try and face the camera with that in mind. Northeast, north, somewhere in there. That way, it's just like taking a picture of somebody. You don't want them standing with the sun behind their back. Same idea, okay? The other thing is when you're setting up uh, the camera on the tree, uh, generally I set it about four or five feet off the ground. Of course, if you want to get pictures of skunks, maybe you'll have it set lower on the tree uh, to take pictures of smaller animals. But the lower on the tree that you have the camera set, the more susceptible it is to foliage and things moving in front of the camera that are going to trigger the camera and give you false triggers. So when you set up the camera, you're going to see, we'll do it on video, where we're going to clear out, once we decide on an area where the camera's going to be, we're going to trim the foliage and, and clear it out. Usually I like to clear out at least, you know, 15, 20 feet in front of the camera and to the sides. You know, look around, anything that looks like it's going to be moving around with a, with a breeze, like trim it, cut it down, and make, so you're, you're kind of setting the stage for your, for your anticipated great game camera video okay um I'm trying to keep these videos short because uh because uh youtube doesn't like them too big so let's stop it right there for now and we can always talk about game cameras some more later thank you